Now, moving on to something a little more serious, um, Eugene Parker, Professor Emeritus, um, he did pass away recently. Uh, he was born back June 10th. My birthday is June 11th, so just a day before mine, although he was born on 1927. Uh, he passed away on March 15th in 2022. Now, you might, you might recognize the name Parker. Well, um, he wrote a paper where he talked about and predicted that the sun should have what's called a solar wind coming off of it that the sun was so hot and the magnetic fields couldn't contain everything that, that literally gas and particles should be streaming away from the sun. Now, some folks made fun of him and thought that couldn't be true, that's all nonsense. Well, he was proven right. We eventually did know, learn more about the solar wind. We were able to measure it and able to see it. And uh, he was the one that said that this should be out there, the dynamics of interplanetary gas and magnetic fields and the interplay of the two. So he was right about that. Now, they named the Parker Solar Probe after him while he was still alive. So this is a little bit of a rare honor. They don't generally name telescopes and observatories after folks while they're still alive. Well, unless they donate a lot of money, in which case then some, sometimes they'll do it. But the Parker Solar Probe um, was designed as a mission to go touch the sun. Okay, not the surface of the sun, but the atmosphere of the sun. And he was there to see the launch. And we can take a look Two, at that here. One, zero. Liftoff of the mighty Delta IV heavy rocket with NASA's Parker Solar Probe, a daring mission to shed light on the mysteries of our closest star, the sun. So very, very cool that he was able to see it launch. And by the way, that's NASA Director of Heliophysics, Dr. Nikki Fox standing behind him. So the, the woman in charge of NASA's study of the sun, heliophysics, sun physics. So very, very cool. And that probe has indeed gotten very close to the sun. Um, maybe not quite this close. That's a little bit of an artist rendering there, a little bit crazy how, how close they made that but it indeed has been getting closer and closer and it's been using flybys of Venus. And on the third flyby of Venus on July 11th in 2020, it pointed its infrared camera down at Venus. This is a couple of different shots as it passed by and we'll rerun it here. That's actually the surface of Venus you're seeing glowing. So that's the night side. You can see the sun emerge from behind and the night side was glowing and passing through those thick Venus clouds. And it was in the infrared bands, a lot like the James Webb Space Telescope looks at, it was able to pass through those clouds and they've matched up those dark splotches with actual features on Venus that were picked up through radar mapping. So pretty darn cool to see it in this high of resolution. Now, folks on Earth have seen through the clouds as well with infrared telescopes, but not at this sort of resolution. Now, did the Parker Solar Probe, has it measured the sun's atmosphere? Well, the answer to that is yes, it actually has. It's measured the electric field, the magnetic field. It has seen uh, debris flying past its, its detectors. And you can see here in these still images, it indeed is seeing streamers of solar wind going past there. So pretty crazy. Those are structures in the corona of the sun. That's the outer atmosphere of the sun. Now, the atmosphere didn't behave quite like we thought. The atmosphere was a little bit, well, kind of wobbly in a way. Let me show you here what I'm talking about. This is the boundary of the sun's atmosphere. On the inside, you're in the atmosphere. And on the outside, you're just out in that solar wind that's flying there. And the Parker Solar Probe crossed that boundary. And they knew it was inside. And then it kind of went back out and then back in and then went back out. So that boundary being wavy was something new that we didn't expect. Now, how do you know that you're inside the corona? Well, inside the corona, the material isn't just flowing away from the sun. It actually is stuck there. It doesn't leave. It kind of goes out and then back in, and the magnetic fields bring most of the material back in. The stuff right on the boundary is accelerated outwards as the wind. So outside the corona, the streamers are a little straighter and um, not, quite as, not quite as kinky back and forth, I guess. Um, now, you can see here more of those streamer images and uh, the properties of the actual corona of the sun are being measured for the first time. And these are streamers um, 
seen right there, not from afar. We've seen them far away during solar eclipses, but we've never seen them up close like this. And this is still being analyzed. Another surprise was what's called switchbacks. You can see these S-shaped features as they go by. So these streamers, sometimes the magnetic field reverses direction and heads back towards the sun and then heads back out again. That was unexpected. We're not really sure why that's happening, but they're, they're trying to figure that out and learn how it formed. So even though Professor uh, Eugene Parker has passed on, his legacy in the Parker Solar Probe continues to explore the sun. They're going to continue to get closer to the sun, and we'll learn more and more about it. And it's quite an honor to have that spacecraft up there doing this work. So uh, we just would like to honor uh, Professor Parker with, with the Parker Solar Probe.